Hello, and welcome back to the X-Plane Scenery Development video series. In the last episode, we textured an object that we had created in SketchUp and then exported it. The next step is to import that object into the X-Plane world. To do that, we'll be using the World Editor tool by Laminar Research, the creators of X-Plane. Now, I've gone ahead and created a scenery package that we can use, but if you're having trouble with that step, I'll link to some documentation in the video description below. Before we dive in, let's take a quick look at the custom scenery folder organization. We still have the building files as we did in our last episode, but we have some new files as well. We have the earth nav data, which is a collection of files that world editor will export and is used by X-Plane to render your custom scenery to the user. Additionally, we have an earth.wed.xml file, a backup file, and a validation report that are internal use for world editor. As you can imagine, at this point, if we start adding more buildings and other custom scenery objects, this folder can get a little bit disorganized. So I prefer to keep all of my buildings and other custom objects in their own folder. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll make a buildings folder and we will take all of our files and we will drag them into that folder. And of course you can split this up. You can have folders within folders. You can name the folder, whatever you want to name it, but at least this way it's a bit more organized, not only when we're looking in the folder view, but as you'll see in a minute, even when we are in world editor, let's go ahead and close this and we will open our tutorial scenery package in world editor. I am using the NASA shuttle landing facility KTTS as the example package that we're going to be doing here. But of course this would be your scenery package. Now, if you're not familiar with world editor, I'll give a quick overview. So the center here is the actual view of the scenery. This is a top down view on the left hand side of this. We have our toolbar with numerous different options over here. We have our library pane, and this is where it lists all the objects that we can place into our scenery package. Additionally, down here is a preview window for the library. So anything that we click on in the library pane, if it's able to show a preview, it will do so down here in the left corner. On the right side, we have essentially our hierarchy. So this is all the things that make up the scenery package and you can organize them in various ways. If you click on one of these, you have the detail pane down here in the bottom right that shows you all the details associated with whatever it is that you're currently working on. Now, because the focus of today's video is placing our custom object into world editor and the X plane world, we'll mostly be focusing on the library pane up here in the top left. Now the library drop down here has a lot of default and third party libraries that come with X plane. So we'll go ahead and drop down and we'll take a look at one of these. We can go into all these different folders and you'll see here that we have some aircraft. We have a heavy aircraft object. Again, this ships with X plane. And of course you can plop this into your custom scenery package and it will show up. You see here, we've got a nice little preview of it, but again, we want to focus on the custom building that we did in the last video. So we will go and close the library and we will open up the local. Now you'll see here that we have the buildings folder that we just created. We can go ahead and drop that down. And sure enough, here's our building.obj. We can go ahead and click on this and we'll get a little preview down here in the bottom left. Sometimes X planes rendering won't exactly work in the world editor preview, but if it doesn't, that's perfectly fine. You don't need to worry about it to place the object. All we have to do is over here in the top down view, simply click and place. If we hit the V key, we can get the move tool or we can just click it up here. And at this point you can use this handle to drag the building around. We'll go ahead and snap it to this corner over here just for the time being. Now, if you want to rotate, there's a little area right here in between these arrows that you can actually click on and use to drag out these handles and rotate this object any direction you need to. So we'll go ahead and work on lining it up with the tarmac. Now at this point, it's obviously sitting on the tarmac and that's not really anything we want to do. So we'll go ahead and rotate around the other way really quick. And we'll use that handle again and we'll pull it down here and center it on the tarmac. Now an issue you might see is that we have our building.obj 
under a runways folder over here in the hierarchy. Obviously, that's not the best idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this and we're going to drag this layer up to the top level under the scenery package. If we want to start organizing, what we can do is we can hit Control G to place this building into a group. And all the custom buildings that we do can go into this group. And if you want, you can create groups with inside of this group all the way down and you can create subgroups to help organize and keep it easier for you to go in and manage all these different objects when you're editing your scenery in World Editor. And of course, we can give a custom name to this. Now that we've placed the object into our custom scenery package, we can save and export the package. So we'll go down here to File and we'll Save. Of course, you can use the shortcut keys if you want. And we also go to File export scenery pack control bravo is the shortcut we don't get a pop-up with any errors so we're good to go and now we can go take a look and see how it looks in x-plane all right so here we are in x-plane we'll go ahead and hop into an external view real fast and let's take a look and see and sure enough there is our custom building in the next episode, we'll go ahead and take a look at how we can apply some night textures so that we get some light coming from the interior offices. Thank you very much for following along on this tutorial. See you again next time.